Hello guys, welcome to Matin. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of the peritoneum. We will also look into different layers of the peritoneum. What are the different peritoneal folds and we will classify the peritoneal folds. We will also look at the embryological basis to understand better about the peritoneal folds. So please stick to, stick to the video till the end to make sure you will get the most of it. So coming to the peritoneum, the peritoneum is a large and it is also thin serous membrane serous membrane because it produces the serous fluid so it is large th thin serous membrane and it lines the interior of the abdominal pelvic cavity it also lines the abdomen and also pelvis interior of it so basically it is made up of an outer layer it is made up of an outer layer called as uh, made up of outer layer which is in fibroelastic tissue which is made up of the fibroelastic tissue and uh, the inner layer is made up of the squamous epithelium inner layer is made up of the squamous epithelium so it has two layers one the outer layer and the inner layer the outer layer is made up of the fibroelastic tissue and the inner layer is made up of the squamous tissue and it forms the, it is uh, it forms the largest serous sac of the body it is the largest serous sac serous sac of the body basically it is similar to the pleura and the serous pericardium because it consists both the parietal and the visceral layers and these layers are separated from each other by a potential space and that is known as the peritoneal cavity we will discuss about the peritoneal cavity in the next video and uh, this peritoneal cavity will uh, produce a thin serous film of fluid and this fluid will lubricate uh, the two layers of the peritoneal uh, two layers of the peritoneum and this helps in the mobility of the small viscera and the uh, abdominal region so what are the different layers of the peritoneum coming to the layers so the peritoneum forms a closed sac right but when it becomes invaginated by number of abdominal viscera it is divided into two layers one an outer parietal layer and then we have a inner viscera layer we have the outer parietal layer outer parietal layer and then we have the inner viscera layer so the peritoneum is a closed sac so what happens when a uh, visceral structure will penetrate inside it it will form like a u shaped so it will uh, divide into the outer parietal layer and the inner visceral layer i'll draw it to show it to you so this will be like this the peritoneum cavity so when it becomes invaginated invaginated by any viscera abdominal viscera any abdominal viscera will invaginate so this will divide into the outer uh, parietal layer and then we have the inner viscera layer so this uh, viscera will be the abdominal viscera which are the stomach spleen it can be liver so this is about the different layers of the peritoneum so coming to the what are the differences between the male and the female peritoneum so generally male peritoneum is complete it is complete but whereas the female peritoneum is incomplete why is it incomplete because the peritoneum will be open into the uterus uterus and the vagina to the exterior in the male we have the complete peritoneum in the female it is incomplete because it opens it to the uterus and the vagina now coming to different folds of the peritoneum and uh, we will also understand about the classification and the embryological basis so coming to the folds of the peritoneum so basically the visera, uh, they are formed by the visceral layer of the peritoneum so many organs within the abdomen are suspended by suspended by the peritoneal folds many abdominal organs are suspended by the peritoneal folds so what happens these organs are mobile right within the abdominal cavity and the degree and direction of their mobility will depend on the size and direction of the folds these folds are attached to the abdominal contents so how much they move mobility and to the extent they move it will all depend on the peritoneal folds and uh, we also have some organs that lie outside the peritone peritoneal cavity we have some organs that lie outside of the peritoneal cavity so they are called as the retroperitoneal organs because they are fixed and they are immobile they are called as the retroperitoneal retroperitoneal because they lie outside of the peritoneal cavity and they are fixed and immobile we also find some organs which are initially suspended by the peritoneal folds but they also possess the mesenteries and later on they lose their mesenteries by a process called a zygosis 
we also have some organs they are initially suspended by the peritoneum but later on they lose the peritoneal fold by the process of zygosus now we'll discuss about the classification of the peritoneal folds so coming to the classification this is very important so understand it carefully so the peritoneal folds are basically classified into three types number one is the we call it the mesentery or the mesocolon mesentery or the mesocolon so what are the number one uh, classification in the peritoneal folds we call it the mesentery or the mesocolon so basically this fold is suspending from the small intestine and this is called as the mesentery and the fold suspending the colon is called as the mesocolon so this is this fold is attaching to the uh, mesentery so the second class uh, classification is the omentum we call it the omentum which is singular and we call it is omenta which is plural so what are omenta these are the peritoneal folds that that connect the stomach with other viscera so we have the stomach and the, uh, these peritoneal folds will connect the stomach with the other viscera under omentum we have a which is called as the greater omentum so what is the greater omentum this is the fold which connects the stomach with the transverse colon it connects the stomach with the transverse colon along the greater curvature of the stomach and then we have the lesser omentum so lesser omentum connects the stomach with the liver along the lesser curvature of the stomach this is this connects to the transverse colon this connects to the liver along the lesser curvature of the stomach we also have something called as the gastrosplenic omentum gastro splenic omentum so this fold of the peritoneum peritoneum will connect the the fundic region of the stomach to the uh, spleen basically it is not generally considered but then we'll still consider it the third thing we have are the ligaments we call it the peritoneal folds as the ligaments actually these are false ligaments not true so these are the folds that connect organs to the abdominal wall or each other these will connect to the abdominal viscera only so these ligaments will connect to the abdominal wall or it may also connect to each other under ligaments we have the gastrosplenic ligament gastrosplenic ligament which connects the stomach with the spleen then we have the linorenal ligament linorenal ligament which connects the spleen with the kidney and then we have the coronary ligaments coronary ligaments which connect the liver to the diaphragm so this is about the classification of the peritoneal folds we are dividing into three classifications mesentery or mesocolon which connects the mesentery with the uh, transverse folds then we have the omentum divided into the greater omentum lesser omentum and also we consider the gastrosplenic omentum and then we have the ligaments gastrosplenic ligament linorenal ligament and the coronary ligaments so this is about the classification of the peritoneal folds now let's to get a better understanding of the peritoneum we look at the embryological basis of understanding the peritoneal folds so coming to the embryological basis embryological basis so basically what happens the developing gut is divided from above downward into three parts it is divided into the foregut mid gut and the hind gut so understand it better the developing gut is divided into three parts So this is the developing gut and it is divided into the three parts one we have the uh, uh, foregut then we have the mid gut and then we have the hind gut so this is the foregut this is the mid gut this is the hind gut so the gut is divided into three parts and then what happens each part has its own artery we have the central abdominal aorta and then the abdominal aorta will give three major branches right the one supplying the foregut is called as the celiac trunk celiac trunk and then one supplying the mid gut is called as the superior mesenteric artery the one supplying the hind gut is called as the inferior mesenteric artery so the main abdominal aorta as it descends down it gives three main branches the branch supplying the foregut is called as the celiac trunk the branch supplying the mid gut is called as the superior mesenteric artery and the branch supplying the hind gut is called as the inferior mesenteric artery so coming to the uh, different regions of the peritoneum actually it is divided into two parts one we have is the ventral mesogastrium 
this is the peritoneal fold that is connecting to the ventral part and then we have the another peritoneal fold behind this is called as the dorsal mesogastrium so this part of the gut which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall we have the posterior abdominal wall right the, which is attached to the posterior abdominal this is called as the dorsal mesogastrium the one attaching to the anterior abdominal wall this is called as the ventral mesogastrium this is the ventral mesogastrium ventral mesogastrium and then the one you have is the dorsal mesogastrium dorsal mesogastrium so this is the ventral mesogastrium and the dorsal mesogastrium so in the ventral mesogastrium somewhere here we find the liver this is the liver and to the dorsal mesogastrium in the upper part here we find the spleen so this is the liver and this is the spleen so what happens what uh, what about the fate of the ventral mesogastrium the ventral part between the liver and the anterior abdominal wall this forms the two ligaments which are known as the falciform ligament and the coronary ligaments so this part i am naming it as number one number one will form the two ligaments known as the falciform or falciform and coronary ligaments so number one will form the falciform and the coronary ligaments between the liver and the anterior abdominal wall and between the stomach and the liver this part i am naming it number two so what happens if uh, the between the posterior of the liver and the anterior of the stomach this forms the lesser omentum number two we have is the lesser omentum so that peritoneal fold is the lesser omentum and between the spleen and the stomach this part i am naming it as number three this three will form the gastrosplenic ligament gastro splenic ligament and uh, between the spleen and the this part number four i am naming it it will also attach to the kidney that forms the lino renal ligament that forms the lino renal ligament and this is about the cranial part and then we have the caudal part right between the uh, down of the spleen and also attaching to the stomach uh, and the foregut this part and when we get as number five number five will form the greater momentum greater momentum so this is the ventral mesogastrium dorsal mesogastrium in the ventral mesogastrium we have the ventral part and the dorsal part this i am naming it as number one and two and what are the structures forming in different regions also i am naming it down so this forms the embryological basis of understanding the different peritoneal folds now we will look at the derivatives of the developing gut in the abdomen and also we look at the what the mid gut and hind gut possesses so coming to the derivatives of the developing gut derivatives so what do we have in the derivatives the first one i told you that gut will divide into the foregut mid gut and the hind gut so the foregut derivatives are the esophagus it is very important to understand the derivatives of the, these guts foregut derivatives are the esophagus then the stomach then we have the upper half of upper half of duodenum upper half of duodenum until the opening of the common bile duct common bile duct will open into the duodenum so until it opens the upper half of the duodenum will come under the foregut then coming to the mid gut mid gut derivatives we have the lower half of the lower half of the duodenum of duodenum then we have the jejunum jejunum then we have the ileum then we have the appendix the cecum we also have the ascending colon ascending colon and also the right two third of right two third of the transverse colon so the right two third of the transverse colon will also come under the mid gut then coming to the hind gut so what are the derivatives of the hind gut so right two third comes goes to the mid gut and the left one third left one third of the transverse colon will go to the hind gut and then we have the descending colon we have the descending colon and then we have the sigmoid colon and also the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal upper part of the anal canal so these are the derivatives of the 
gut fore gut mid gut and the hind gut so the mid gut and hind gut hind gut will also will possess only the dorsal mesentery and what is the fate of the dorsal mesentery the it forms the mesentery of the jejunum and ileum it also forms the mesentery of the appendix which is known as the meso appendix and it forms the mesentery of the transverse colon which is known as the transverse meso colon and it also forms the mesentery of the sigmoid colon which is known as the sigmoid meso colon so this is about the peritoneum peritoneal folds classification and its derivatives so if you watch the video till the end please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share it to your friends who are in need of the anatomy thank you so much